The next speaker is uh, Guy Tevet, uh, that will talk about uh, human motion diffusion model. Um, this is a joint work with uh, Sikal Raab, Brian Gordon, Jonathan Shafir, Daniel Kohanor, Amit Bermano from Tel Aviv University. Um, thank you for the introduction. Uh, in our paper, with this wonderful team, we present a motion diffusion model, or in short, MDM, which given a control signal, uh, generates 3D human motion. For example, for the text prompt, uh, a person turn to his right and paces back and forth, it will generate the corresponding motion. Uh, MDM provides very high quality uh, motion generation, like in this example of this tricky air flip, and also diversity for the same uh, text prompt. Here, we see the diversity of a person skipping a rope. Um, maybe the main challenge in uh, motion generation is the availability of data. But before uh, we talk about this, let's uh, define what this data is actually look like. So uh, motion uh, is uh, defined on top of a human skeleton uh, for each frame. Uh, each frame is defined with a series of uh, joint angles. And with those joint angles, we can define a, a single pose. Uh, doing so over time, the sequence of poses gives us motion. So the tensor we actually generate is joint time. And we use the simple uh, body model that also gives us the mesh, the skin uh, surrounding the body. So to acquire such data, we need either a massive hardware, like this example of uh, uh, this motion capture dome by CMU, or otherwise we need a professional animator that will uh, work extensively to generate animations. Either way, we don't have a lot of data. In our case, we use uh, about uh, 15K examples. Each one is about uh, seven seconds long. And uh, it's also annotated with text. We use pairs of motion and text that describe the motion. Um, the problem of text to motion was mainly tackled by uh, this framework, also in the, those three papers from last year. One of them is by our team. And the general approach was learning a shared latent space for text and motion. And then at inference, following this red line, uh, encode text and then decode motion. The main issue with uh, this approach is the lack of diversity. Although there is some diversity, for example, in this uh, state-of-the-art uh, model, it is very limited. Meanwhile, in this year, in another planet called the Pixel Planet, we see this. We see that uh, diffusion models are booming for the task of uh, text-to-image, both in quality but also uh, for diversity. They model very well the distribution of images given a text prompt and we want to adapt those attributes for motion generation. But we still wonder, do we have enough data? So the answer is yes, but I think that it's still an open question why it works so well uh, without, uh, without, with a limited data. So before I introduce MDM, uh, let's just recall what uh, the diffusion setting is. So in diffusion, we have the uh, noising process, which is a stochastic process that noises a, a, a sample from the distribution up to a pure noise. And the model learns to uh, denoise it through a small uh, step, small steps, capital T small steps, about 1,000. So we know what noise looks like in the image domain, but how does it look like in the motion domain? Uh, how does it look like in the angle space? So it looks something like this. 
So here we see uh, motion denoised from, uh, from pure noise. And one uh, uh, interesting thing to note about this that we move forward in two different axes. One is the denoising axis, but we also move forward in the time axis because we deal here with the temporal data. So this is MDM, and we will understand it through uh, focusing on three different features that adapt diffusion to the motion domain. The first one will be temporal architecture, then geometric losses, and finally, generic conditioning. So we said we deal with the temporal data, so we need a temporal architecture. So in our case, we use a transformer encoder that get the noised motion as an input and uh, output the denoised version. Uh, in this case, each token at the sequence represents a single frame of the motion. But this is not enough. The results are still pretty shaky, and we want to add to it something that is widely used in motion literature that is called uh, geometric losses. So uh, it is widely acceptable that uh, in order to generate motion, we regulate not only the data itself, which is the joint angles, but also the joint positions, uh, sometimes the joint velocities. And we can even handle with uh, particular features. For example, we can regulate specifically the foot contact. Those are just two examples of many, many geometric losses that people use. Uh, to regulate motion generation. But uh, this not goes straightforward with the diffusion setting because we cannot apply um, those losses on a mid-noisy version of the motion. We need a clean version. So lucky for us, for each uh, def uh, denoising step, we can predict directly the clean uh, version of the motion we can apply those losses and then noise it back to t minus one step. In that way, when we predict the clean version at each step, we can apply not only the diffusion loss, but also those geometric losses. As, as you can see in the orange figures, this improved dramatically the quality of the motion. Uh, in generic conditioning, we consider a, a generic a conditioning code C uh, as an input to MDM, and the, this changes uh, uh, depends on the application. For example, for the task of text to motion, we use a fixed uh, clipped encoder to encode the text. For the task of action to motion, we use uh, class embeddings, and uh, as our colleagues uh, recently showed, they can attach to MDM a fixed uh, audio encoder and implement the task of uh, music to dancing motion. Overall, we outperform, our, uh, we outperform the previous work by both quality, and if you remember the diversity of the previous uh, work, here is the diversity to the same text prompt with uh, MDM. And finally, uh, we adapt a diffusion imaging painting to the motion domain. So imaging painting uh, is the application of taking an area of the image and using a, a text condition, you can, for example, add zebras to the image. But since we don't deal with zebras, this is not clear how does it relate to motion. So let's recall that we generate this tensor of joints cross time, and we ask what if we give some of it as an input from an existing input motion and generate just the rest. So, for example, we can give as an input the prefix and the suffix frames of the motion, and jet and generate the, the middle motion such that it satisfies both. And in that way, we get the application of in-betweening. We can also do so in the joint axis. We can take some of the joint from input motion and generate the rest. And here we get the application of body part editing. In this example, we take the lower body uh, motion from the input and with this text prompt, a person throws a ball, 
we uh, generate just the upper body. So motion in between can be sometimes very challenging. Uh, like in the middle example, you see that this uh, sudden uh, bending down movement is not revealed to complete. And in body part editing, let's look with the same text from a person throwing a ball. The throwing motion uh, differs between, uh, it depends on the uh, lower body part. We can see different throwing movement that is also conditioned on the lower body part that is given as an input. Uh, this work was widely accepted in the community. We were the third most like uh, AK tweet this year, just between uh, DALI and uh, Imagen. If you wonder, the first one was stable diffusion. And in a manner of weeks, the community uh, adapted this model and integrated into a Unity gaming engine, such that uh, people can use those animations for their gaming platform. And you can also find our code on GitHub and use our uh, replicate demo. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, questions? Uh, there are questions there? Thank you. Uh, it's a very beautiful work. And um, <clears throat> um, I wonder how did you incorporate the uh, um, hierarchy in, say, the joints uh, of, of a movement? Like, you said that there's uh, some losses that incorporate the hierarchy. I wonder if there's also an architecture that you used to incorporate the, the hierarchy in the movement. Can you raise your hand? I don't see you. Ah, okay, hey. So, uh, about hierarchies, do you mean the uh, tree-like uh, structure of the data? No, the, the tree-like uh, structure of, of a movement. If I'm bending down, there's, um, there's like basic joints that are moving and also at the leaves of this structure tree uh, are other joints like, okay, I don't so know, wrists or... Yeah, okay. So we don't explicitly give the model this uh, uh, underlying structure of motion and also the body. We just represent a single frame with the list of joints and those correlations are learned uh, implicitly. Okay, thank you. Hi, are you handle two problems? First, when the camera is moving and not steady cam that you extract the footage from and the other one, when you, there is a scene with a lot of characters, not one, many characters. How you um, um, captured it? Yes, yeah, so I think that yeah, multi-person motion generation is a very interesting task. Unfortunately, we don't have almost at all, we don't have data, we have just a few examples. Um, and yes, this, this is a possible future work. And what was your first question? Okay, so we don't, we don't model the camera movement. Uh, in the animation you saw, we just uh, uh, pick the, the camera position that most flattering the motion, but we focused on the motion itself. Okay, so th thank you very much. In the break, we have a diffusion model of Guy answering questions. <laughs> So uh, uh, let's thank uh, the speaker again. Thank you. Thank you.